I have three options, right? I can, the six plexes, I can actually um, go ahead and assign out even before I close and just, you know, mm. I don't make two, 250 on those each, or I can close on everything and flip them out for seven to $800,000 profit. So again, my third option would obviously to be re to just refinance them. If I could get a $2 million evaluation, which I don't think I'd have an issue with, then I just go to the bank and say, Hey, you know, give me 75% of that 200 a unit. I'm like, um, should I sell everything? Like what's going on here? So. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Deal Destruction. I'm your host, Matt, and I've got Mark with me today from Oakville. Really excited to be exploring a unique opportunity that I know the audience is going to love because it's a larger portfolio kind of apartment building, 42 units in Burlington. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Good, Matt. Good, good to be on, man. Awesome. So I'm excited to kind of dive into this deal. This is the sort of deal, obviously, that even myself and my team, we'd always be looking at. And just to give perspective for the audience, this isn't kind of your first multifamily deal, right? So you've got a portfolio of about 200 units right now, primarily in Hamilton. Burlington's yep. kind of a stone throws away from it. So it's not that dramatically different. Do you mind, before we jump into this deal, maybe just giving some context for the audience about your real estate journey and where you are today? Sure. Uh, I've been investing for 17 years now. Uh, started doing burrs before they were actually a thing in Newmarket, Ontario. I've worked my way from Newmarket to Toronto and then out uh, west to Hamilton. Uh, I've settled on Hamilton basically. Still own some stuff outside. Actually, sorry. I went Newmarket, Toronto, Cornwall, and mm -hmm. then Hamilton. Um, so I still have some stuff in Toronto and Cornwall. And then the rest of my port, the majority of my portfolio is in Hamilton. And I concentrate on larger, well, I guess medium sized multifamily pro size proper multifamily properties, residential, um, and I burr them. So awesome. And then, so for perspective, just for everyone, what's going on right now in the Hamilton market? Like what, what's kind of the price per unit or what sort of cap rates, what are some of the metrics you guys use when you're trying to figure out if a deal looks enticing? Yeah. I mean, cap rates are really compressed right now because I mean, you can get a CMHC interest rate at like 1.2, 1.3%. Uh, which is, is, is ridiculous. Like you can mm -hmm. get under 10 years under 2% right now. Yeah. Um, so we're seeing, I mean, three to three and a half on the buy for, for stuff with upside. Um, gotcha. Sometimes a little bit lower than three, like 2.75. Um, and on the, it's like completed, not much upside. Typically you're looking in the four and a quarter to four and a half range. Okay. And so when we kind of compare Burlington to Hamilton, my understanding is if anything, Burlington's probably going to be a hair pricier. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So Hamilton, you're probably looking, depends like for, for stuff like this, you're looking 180 to 220 a door, mm -hmm. uh, maybe 250. Cause I mean, this portfolio is four buildings. It's um, two, six units, a 19 unit on one plot of land and an, an 11 unit. So obviously we know the smaller stuff goes for a bigger price per door, right? So. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm kind of excited to jump into it. Do you mind uh, pulling up a screen share here and let's check out some of what yeah. you got together. So, so again, it's four properties, um, 464 Elizabeth, 341, 343 St. Paul, 332 Guelph Line and 2148 2150 Lil, Lil Nan Courts. Okay, cool. Um, so, I mean, the lots, the, this is all South Burlington. So it's, um, some of it's close to the lake. It's, you know, obviously older Burlington. And I mean, I'll just like, I'll just come down and like this one, like some of the rents are like, they, they're already at 1100 dollars per unit. Some of them are higher, like you can see 1660, 1500, that type of thing. And you know, this one in their 12 unit or 11 units, they have three vacancies. So okay. when I look at that, 
I can go in and renovate that unit for probably $25,000, maybe 30, depending on the size. Um, and I can get easily, I'll get 22 to $2,300 there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say 1600 seemed uh, uh, pretty low as far as an estimate for a vacant unit there. Well, I'm getting 1650 in, or to 1750 in Hamilton. Yeah. And would that be for a, a one bed or a two bed in Hamilton? Two bedroom in Hamilton. Two bed. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And so how did you originally come across this uh, property? Was this on the market? Like this is an estate sale? What's the story? This is MLS. MLS. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. What's uh, kind of what's the plan here? Or what, uh, what are kind of the next steps for you, Mark? Well, so I mean, obviously put an offer in, but so there's 44 offers in on this. Oh, okay. Oh shit. So we got yeah. a lot of competition. So it's listed at $7.2 million. It's listed at, I think it's $170,000 a door or something like okay. that. Yeah. It, it's listed ridiculously low. Gotcha. Um, kind of the plan on it with, for me would be to buy it, um, renovate any of the, the, the smaller, like, so the six units, renovate any of the units in there, bump up the rents uh, from like 1600 to 22, and then just flip those out real quick within six months. Um, and, you know, basically go ahead and try to get a free 19 unit property. That would be the goal. Or, I mean, I can't get my price. I can always go to RBC and get a, a residential financing on it or portfolio finance and do a whole bunch of different things, but I can get the value up as long as I can get it at the right price. Mm hmm. And so what's the standard way you kind of structure your deals, Mark? Um, like, do you just take it down 100% yourself? Do you bring on equity partners? So this deal, um, I mean, I, I don't know if you want to see the kind of the numbers I'm looking at. Or yeah, anything. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so let's, let's We're happy to yeah. see anything you're willing to share. So again, it's listed at 7.2. I think you're probably going to be at 11.5 to buy this thing. And so I'm just curious because we don't necessarily deal with this in London um, quite yet, the same way you guys have to deal with it in your market. So 11.5, like if that's the price that takes it, I'm assuming someone's coming in with a conditional offer on this, or do you have to, you, you're going firm, even if so, you're going like 4 million above ask. Right. So you're, this is a firm offer. You probably close quick. Um, so January timeframe, like, third week of January or something. Um, and it's, yeah, you, nobody's seen any of the units. Wow. They really could be falling down. There's I mean, that I drove, much demand. I've, yeah. I've driven by them and, you know, I kind of walked around them. Yeah. So I kind of have a good idea of what they are, but yeah, again, nobody's seen them. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's intense. Yeah. So how I'm structuring this is, I'm actually getting a first mortgage of 10.5. Okay. Um, so I need a million dollars down plus some ancillary costs in that. Uh, I'm, so I'm getting a private first. Um, and then the second, I'm actually, so typically what I would do is I do a 50-50 partnership, but I'm trying to do more deals by myself. So this one, I have my I have a second guy who's kind of my equity partner. Basically, he's getting 8% preferred rate of return on it, plus 10% of the overall upside. Gotcha. But I get, and I get to kick him out on a refinance or sale. Okay, nice. I like that. Yeah. And so I'm sure immediately, and I knew this was going to kind of be a different deal destruction than most, but I'm sure the audience will have a lot of questions about that first place mortgage. Now, I'm I'm going to guess that that's a byproduct of your relationships and experience and just like industry experience and all that. But do you mind just kind of painting a picture for how do you go about lining up a mortgage on a property like this when you kind of have to go firm? What does that sequence of events look like for you? <laughs> um, it was a text message. <laughs> and this is a popular property, right? Obviously 44 offers popular property. Yeah. Um, so therefore I texted him and I said, Hey, have you heard of this? He's like, yeah. I'm like, I want to do it. Um, I got a million. Can you do this? Mm -hmm. And he's like, 
Yeah. And I'm like, okay, what's the rate? What are the fees? Can you back end some of those fees? Also, I don't know how much income this is going to pay me during the time. So I'm going to be short on the interest. Can we collateralize the interest payments and you loan that to me as well? Mm. So he said, yes. Nice. Because basically it was, the conversation came, okay, what's the plan? He knows I always have a plan. So it's like, yeah. number, number one, the plan is I have three options, right? I can, the six plexes, I can actually um, go ahead and assign out even before I close and just, you know, mm. I don't make two, 250 on those each, maybe a little bit more, maybe 300. Um, or I can close on everything and flip them out for, you know, seven to $800,000 profit. Uh, and then obviously I'm paying him back and I, I guarantee six months of interest. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask. So, and you know, done up to the nines, what do you figure per unit? Um, like uh, these buildings could be worth. Oh, they're over three. Like that's not even done up to the nines. So there was a building sold in Oakville, um, you know, same sort of area and mm -hmm. like 300 a door. Gotcha. So there, I mean, there's four plexes selling in Burlington at four to 450. So, I mean, even the six plexes, if I, if I take that down a notch and say, and that the 300 a door was for something like a, um, uh, it, it was a hundred million dollar property. So like it was a big building, right? Where gotcha. you get economies of scale. Yeah. Uh, so like I figure a sixplex, what do you, maybe 400 a door, you're selling 2.4 million. Mm -hmm. And my cost on these, if you break it down as a per unit cost, they're like one three-ish, maybe one four. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Keep, uh, if you don't mind, keep walking us through uh, some more of the details here. Yeah. So again, my third option would obviously to be re to just refinance them. If I could get a $2 million evaluation, which I don't think I'd have an issue with, then I just go to the bank and say, hey, you know, give me 75% of that and I can pay out what I bought it for at least, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then I typically don't get a 19 unit for free at the end, yet that's that would be the goal. Um, so again, I got a down payment of a hundred thousand. I got, you know, a little bit of land transfer tax to pay 225,000. Yeah. So that's all honestly all coming from a joint venture partner. So again, I'm putting zero of my own money in on this deal. The only thing I am going to put in is I'm going to do the renovation costs. I'm going to fund those. Gotcha. Um, just cause I don't think there's going to be that many. I think there's like eight vacant units and I can, I can basically cover that just for the flip. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, all, everybody gets paid on exits, so yeah. refinances or, um, or on uh, sale. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Uh, I don't have an inspection. I don't know. I'll have, <laughs> I might have an appraisal. My financing costs are actually going to be way more than that. Um, sure but they're going to be back ended as well. Right? Like he's going to take yeah. points on the back end. Cause again, it's one of those types of deals, right? Um, gross rents are close to 59,000 laundry parking. Uh, these are the actual expenses. I always put property management in. I have my own property management company yet. I, that bills the yeah. properties. So, you know, I can, I can pay the employees there. Right. Yeah. Really uh, important as you scale, especially to the size you are that you keep, all those in separate buckets and cross bill and all that. Yeah. Uh, 3% vacancy, which in Burlington is high, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. So again, this, I'm not getting, obviously I'm getting, let's say 8% yeah. interest only. Right. Mm -hmm. So like my negative net on that is $28,000 a month. Yeah. And so but do you want, do you want to talk through for the audience that like they're still trying to pick their jaw up off the floor? Like, you know, how do you get comfortable with that? Well, so number one is I've collateralized the debt, right? So I'm putting it against another property. So again, so that $420,000 worth of interest that I owe on that loan actually doesn't get paid until six months. So I have a six month loan against it. So all I had to do in six months is either refinance or sell, sell, sell properties. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so how do you get comfortable with that? I don't know. You grow some balls. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> a lot of it comes down to experience, right? Like well, you run it, numbers a lot. You've done smaller projects that I'm sure like worked out roughly to what you projected. You kind of gain confidence, right? Yeah. Like I have confidence that I could flip those, those, those six units for two to 2.2 million, like overnight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, not even close on them if I really didn't want to, right? Like I could mm -hmm. literally flip the contracts for 300, no fuss, no muss right now. Yeah. Um, and a 4.27 cap in, in, in Burlington is actually not that bad. Mm -hmm. Like if, if I could find a, a property in Hamilton that I got a 4.27 cap with this much upside, like that, I, I would say that's the deal of the century or at least the deal of the year. Yeah, gotcha. Awesome. Well, I love you jumping on to share this with the audience. I'm sure that you weren't necessarily really jumping on to get my opinion per se, but I'm really glad that we had you come on and kind of break it down for us. Um, well, what is your opinion? What, what would you do here? Yeah, like, you know, for me, I definitely don't see myself holding on to any of the properties. But if I was confident in my fair market value, like, you know, my ARV, the way you are, I definitely see the draw to it. And I think like, I think right now things are so hot in these uh, multifamily properties that, yeah, your upside is probably pretty significant, even um, though 400,000 a unit makes my stomach turn. Um, oh, but... me too, man. Me too. <laughs> like, I'm like, I, I don't 200 a unit. I'm like, I'm, should I sell everything? Like what's going on here? So yeah. And what, so that was yeah. one of the questions I was going to put forward to you. So like, I think for me, I guess, before I move on from this, I probably would be looking at spinning off pretty much all those properties. I guess yeah. if there was a version where maybe I got one of the six plexes to keep for completely free, I would just lever the shit up out of that and use that as kind of a float fund. Um, but the, the only reason I like the 19 unit, it's because it's 11 and eight, it's kind of like a little odd too, is it's on a massive piece of land, has 32 mm. parking spots. So down the road, five years, somebody might come and give me a bigger check just for development. True, yeah. And absolutely. if you get it at, the price i mean what's my cost going to be on it really at the end of the day right like i'm gonna you know if i can sell the six units for close to five million sell the 11 unit for you know 3.3 and I, mm -hmm. I can refinance that property no problem yeah and get get all that money out so yeah absolutely um so one of the questions i was going to ask you mark you know how do you decide what properties or projects to take on next you know when do you decide enough is enough is there enough like you because it's something that i know myself and like a lot of the other people that kind of play in the space are constantly asking themselves right because you don't i'm going to guess i'm going to project here but you probably don't have to do this deal in order to put food on the table but yeah. it kind of becomes fun yeah it's game um well here's the thing right like it, it I have a system in place where I can add pretty much anything to, and it, it takes no much, not much more time for me. Mm -hmm. um, so adding another piece or four pieces as this is, um, now I probably actually have to do more work on this because it'd be some fl quick flipping and stuff like that. So I'd actually probably get my hands dirty a little bit, but on the whole, for me to add an apartment building to the mix, especially if it's in a good area and it's well run right now, takes very little time. And I don't really typically buy the, um, the, the, the really crappy ones anymore. Um, mm -hmm. just for that simple reason. Now I did buy one during COVID and that's taking up a lot of our time, but still like, that's a different story. So when's enough enough? Um, or what type of, when, when do I jump on deals? Well, I jump on deals when they come about and they're concrete construction and, you know, I'll, I'll offer on everything, right? Like it's, it's yeah, here, here you want me to pay for it? No problem. I'll buy it cash, close quick, happy to do it. Um, sometimes though, I mean, people take some people like that. Some people don't, some, you know, want 44 offers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So when's enough enough? I don't know. I'll, <laughs> I'll let you know when I get there. I, I mean, I did retire three years ago and I got bored. So. Yeah. And are you like a five-year planner type guy? Are you taking a year at a time? Do you like map things out on a, 
a larger scale? No, not really. I'm kind of uh, building comes along. It looks good. Great. Let's let's put the offer in. If we get it, great. Let's keep moving. Um, kind of have the the relationships and partnerships now that it's it's decently easy to just phone, make a phone call and say, hey, this is the deal. Um, are you interested? No, great. Next one. So this took me three phone calls. Yeah. And it, and it was done. And, and my second phone call was like, my buddy was like, Ooh, I think I can yet. I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff in the States. So I might be tied up. You know, if you don't like, if you don't get it, call me back next week. And then my third phone call, it was like, Oh yeah, we can do that. Yeah. And that's really the key of, you know, investing for the long term into your relationships and systems, right? Where you can then really add additional units without stressing the overall like ecosystem you've built up until this point. Yeah, for sure. Awesome, Mark. Well, I'm sure you've, you know, kind of piqued the interest of a lot of my audience. If people want to follow along with you on your journey, can they? And what's the best way to do so? Yeah. Uh, well, YouTube, I have my own YouTube channel, obviously not as big as you. Uh, we just cracked 1,750 subscribers. That's awesome. Uh, man. Yeah. The Mark Loeffler experience. And then also Instagram, pretty um, active there right now, living the dream 40. Awesome. And we'll throw a link to everything in the video description down below so that uh, everyone on Deal Destruction can check it out. And definitely, I'd love to hear, you know, keep us posted on how this all progresses. And uh, maybe we'll do a follow up video just to see. Uh, how everything shook out. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. All right. Cheers, bro. What are you saying? Not the time or the place, baby, it's not right.